It doesn't matter what age you are, what religion you are, what nationality you are, it is happening worldwide to really good, well-trained, well-educated people. It's in 2010 and I was at a meeting and I got a phone call from my oldest son and he said, Mom, Dad just died. I totally was not expecting that. You know, I, I never felt, felt like he was gonna live to 100, but I never thought he would die at 56. And so that threw me into immediately running his company, being a mother of four. I, I was running on empty at that point. I was running on energy that was generated from outside of me. It was difficult. So six months into, into this, I was working my day job at the school, coming home at one o'clock in the afternoon and working the company until midnight. My friends came up to me and said, you need a life, try online dating. When I went to this one site and I found a nice man, looked nice, he was very attractive. He was an international businessman from London. And at that point I'm thinking, well, that's kind of neat. I have a company, he has a company. International travel is great. We'd lived in Europe when I was in the Air Force. We'd lived in Germany for a few years and I loved to travel. So I thought that'd be a really good match. And we'd be talking, chatting for hours. And there were times when his sister would come on and I would have a chat box with her and with his son and the attorney. I got to know a lot of people and I started asking questions. I would ask Mary about Eric, you know, how, how was his story? And so I wanted to build this family and that's what it was. It, I was beginning to bring in another family in my life, which was important to me. So it became a separate life. It was almost like I was isolating, that I, I wasn't listening to friends because I would ask questions that it might have been for some people red flags. For me, they might have been pink flags, that's the way that I call them. And when I would call him on those, he would always have a plausible answer and said, just listen to me, you know, let me become your life. People can see that it was fun when I heard from him, but they didn't see the frustration when he didn't come to Christmas, when he didn't come to visit. The, the anxiety of getting them there. I even set up hotel rooms for his family to come over for that first Christmas. And then the sudden, well, we got caught up in something, we can't come. So it was very emotional up and down, uh, which was tough, but the up times, that's when the endorphins kicked in. It was very fun. It was a, a very fun relationship. I didn't see the red flags until later on. We started talking business and he was going to be paid quite a lot of money for this job. And I understood too at that point that sometimes in business you get paid after the job's done. So we were trying to get him to that point that he would be getting paid. Part of the thing was to bring money back to the United States. He was going to move to the, back to the States to be with me. And his attorney said, we need to do a power of attorney. And it was $2,500 to start. And he said, could you help me out with this? And I said, sure. How do I do that? And he said, well, I want you to go to Western Union. He walked me through it, talked me through it. And I was like, okay, I do this. But that was the first argument. And I don't argue with many people, but I remember we had this little tiff over sending money. That was the beginning, which I figured was fairly small. And every time I sent him money, he would say, I'm paying you back. I will get this back to you as soon as I get paid. There was always that assurance that it's coming back and it'll come back with interest. And I promise I'll make good. And even though I may not have been completely comfortable, I wanted to help him out so that he could come home to me. And that's, it started small and it went up from there. September 10th, 2012, he came online that morning and he said, I have a confession to make. And I said, you don't have to do this. He goes, I know this is gonna hurt you, but I have to tell you. I'm thinking, oh, you really don't need to hurt me today. And I, he said, Deb, I have to confess, this has all been a scam. And I'm looking at my screensaver of my handsome Brit and up pops this little camera. And now I'm looking at this brown haired, brown eyed, brown skinned young man with a big smile on his face. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's like hitting a brick wall. But the next day I called my parents because the hardest part about the money for me was I'd gotten my parents involved. 
Eric had said, can you ask anybody to help us out? And I'd asked some friends, business friends, fortunately they said no, but my mother and dad said yes. And they gave me $100,000 with the assurance that it would come back to them with good interest relatively quickly. So when I realized that this was a scam and I had lost over a million dollars, which I didn't have, I needed to get my parents paid back. And how was I gonna do that? So we went to the FBI together. I'd kept meticulous records over those two years. And when we walked in, they heard the story and they're like, we are so sorry you've been a victim to this, which I hate that word. They said, you've been manipulated, but there's actually nothing we can do because he's outside the United States. And I didn't talk about it for years. And I tried everything I could to keep my company going. I've paid my parents back multiple times over the last 12 years, um, but I still feel that I owe them everything. It devastated me financially because I did give away my retirement accounts and it could ruin somebody if you had no way of making that money back. And it happens to so many people over 60 that don't have the time to regain that money, to get you know their, their financial resources in place to retire. And it was devastating. But more so from the emotional point of view, I knew I could get the money back, not a million dollars, but I didn't need it. I, I didn't need that to live. But my heart got ripped out. And my trust in people was really challenged at that point. I mean, when the scam ended, I really did feel alone. So after an interview with the Palm Beach Post, they got me in, in touch with an organization called SCARS, which is the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams. It's based out of Miami. It's an international nonprofit, and it supports victims of relationship romance scams. You know, you get someone that just found out a week ago that they were taken, and they think that it's their fault. They're so embarrassed, they're so mortified, they're just vulnerable, they're, they're afraid, they've lost all their money, they might've lost their home, they've lost their friends, their family, everybody's telling them how stupid they were. And so what I try to do now is to get it across to them first. Forgive yourself for what happened. It was not your fault. You were victimized by them, they're manipulative, they're, they, they know the playbooks, they know how to get you. And I didn't know that at the time. You know, the person that I started with may not have been the person that I ended with. I kind of felt like it was, but in today in the work that I do, I realize the person that you are initially contacted by is not the person you're going to be asked for money by. It's not gonna be the person that grooms you at the ends. They work in these teams and some people are better at the grooming part, then some are better at the closing part. It's a business, that's all I can say. It's a business and they're well-trained and they have technology, they have a ton of money at their disposal. So for me, it's getting the word out that this is happening to everybody. It doesn't matter what age you are, what religion you are, what nationality you are, it is happening worldwide to really good, well-trained, well-educated people. And the law enforcement and media and everybody else need to realize it could be your mother, your father, your son, anybody can be taken at any time. Find somebody that you trust. Tell your story to somebody you trust. You don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to tell how much money you lost, just that something has happened and you need help. And in time, by telling that story, you become very empowered. And when you realize that you're not the only one this is happening to, but by telling your story, you can be there for somebody else, that gave me great hope. Nobody ever questioned the wires I did. I had never sent a wire in my life other than buying real estate. And so all of a sudden, when I had these $10,000 wires, $50,000, $100,000 wires to Malaysia, to India, to wherever it was going, you would have thought that a flag would have been raised there and someone might have said, Deb, what are you doing here? Nobody ever asked me. Now that we know more about what's going on, you can see these things happening. A person that normally wouldn't be sending money overseas starts coming in and doing it very quickly I would sit down and say, can you tell me a little bit about this person and try to develop a relationship with them? Because if you go in there and say, this is a scam, you're being taken, you're gonna turn that person away and they're gonna walk away to another bank. They don't want you in their business. They want you to protect their money. But at some point a banker's gonna say, I can't help this person anymore. So it's, it's, a, it's a hard place to be in the bank, but just listen to the stories. If it sounds unreal, 
then get somebody else involved. I wasn't objective at that point. I knew what I needed to do and I needed to get it done quickly. And I wasn't looking at my benefit, I was looking at his. And, it, and it's a tough place, especially when you've lost it all. We need to talk about it. We need to have the discussion and like I say, beware and be aware. Education is fine, but it's the personal stories, it's the victims coming forward, only three out of 100 report. And so we need to do a better job of, of allowing people to report it without making them feel s stupid because there is a, a face to the story. And that's what I wanna thank you for is putting a face to these stories because otherwise they're just numbers.